In the last video I shaped the side pieces to fit the buck. This time I'll work on the center pieces. I'm starting with the bottom and this one is simpler because it's smaller and it does not have a reverse curve. I'm ready to start the shaping on the next part. And we need to get some idea of where we're going with this. If you look closely at the buck, you can see that it's basically pretty flat right here and pretty flat here. So what I'm saying is that the front half of this doesn't really need much shape at all. And pretty much all of the action is near the back. And we need to know what radius we're shooting for in the back. So using my radius guide, it's pretty close to a 6 inch radius for most of this curvature. So I put a 6 inch radius wheel in the English wheel that we'll do the shaping with. And another thing I want to know is how much angle the rear of this part needs. So looking at this flat surface, I want to know what angle we need to pull the metal down tight against the buck. And it's about 50 degrees. So my strategy will be to shrink this panel to pull these edges down until I have about a 50 degree angle here and I'll pull the side down about the same amount. So it needs the most shrinking in this area and almost no shrinking here. So let's get started with that. I'll shrink the back edge first. So I'm going slowly with this. There's no need to rush the process. I'd rather work with control than to overdo something. So I pulled it down maybe 15 degrees on the first pass. Well, probably closer to 20 degrees on this second pass. And I'll pull this out so you can take a look at what I'm doing. So that's maybe a 20 degree angle and we're going to 50. So we have a long way to go but it's all moving in the right direction. So I'll keep shrinking until I have a steeper angle. So let's take a look at that. Again, we're shooting for about 50 degrees, and we probably have about 40, so we're pretty close. And one more pass should bring this down to the angle I'm looking for. This angle doesn't have to be exact, but I just want to give you some idea of what I have in mind for the first shrinking on this panel. So I think that's about the right angle, and let's try this on the buck. So far so good. So it does need some curl in this area and I will pick up that curl by shrinking this area. So let's get started with that. So I've just made a few light shrinks on this one side but already you can see I have quite a steep angle on that. Let's try it against the buck. Well, that might be a good place to stop the shrinking on this side. So I'll repeat this same action on the other side. So I think that looks pretty good. I'll try it on the buck again. And I'm pretty happy with what I see. So it's following the contour from this station to this station pretty well. It's pretty flat from this station forward. And the next thing we need to do is to dome this area. So I'm going to wheel this lightly in a few different directions and just start doming that metal up. Working at fairly light pressure.
So here's where we're at. The shape is starting to come around. And we'll try it on the buck. And um, I like what I see, but I can see that I actually shrunk this corner too much. In other words, I have more curl on these two edges than is required for the part. I can fix that, but uh, I'm just making a mental note that the next time I won't shrink it quite so much. So there are different ways to stretch this out. I certainly could use the stretching machine, but I could also use the English wheel. If I just wheel on these edges with higher pressure, that will stretch these edges and it will bring them up. So I think that's the approach I'll take. Because the shrinker can only go into the panel about one inch, there's always a ridge that's left on a large panel. So it can only shrink an inch on the edge and it leaves a bump inboard from that. And it's a little bit difficult for the English wheel to cross over that bump in the beginning. So I couldn't wheel all the way to the corner before, but now I can. So if I wheel that corner with higher pressure, I'll start lifting that corner up. I'll use a little bit more pressure now. So I've raised this corner quite a bit. I'll do the same thing on this corner. So I believe I've raised those two corners about the same amount. Let's try this on the buck now and see how it's coming. Wow, it's coming very well. So I'm not done yet. I can see that it's touching the buck here. And uh, I'm going to get my little flexible glue stick. I often use a hot glue stick to show me the contour that I need. So to maintain the angle I have here and tie into the straight line I have here, it needs to raise in this area just a small amount. I'd say about a quarter of an inch. So that's where I'm going to wheel next. Let's take a look at that on the buck. So looking at the shape of this panel now, I can see that I actually need to stretch this edge I worked so hard to shrink to bring it back to 50 degrees. But that's easy to do with the English wheel, and I think at this point I can actually change to a wheel that is a lower crown. So I believe that's improved it quite a bit, and you can see I have a smoother finish. It's not finished yet, but it doesn't have the ridges and bumps like it did with the higher crown wheel. We'll try this on the buck again. And that's much closer to that 50 degree angle I was shooting for. I can see I have to stretch it a small amount, but we're closing in on the shape that we need. And because of all the shaping I did on this area, it's actually gotten to be a little bit hollow in the center. I can see a gap of about three-eighths of an inch in the center. So I'm going to fix that now. And the fix for that will be to start gently stretching the metal in this area. And I want to bring this up until it just is flat. Let's take a look at that. I don't want to overdo this. It's coming along, but it needs a little more wheeling. Much better. It's just a little bit low right here. So we're going to do some localized wheeling in this one area. I'm going to go to a lower crown wheel. The lowest crown wheel always leaves the best finish, 
but you have to use a wheel with at least as much contour as the metal requires in the place you're working. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to wheel this just a little more near the front. I can only go so far into this panel with this low crown wheel, but I'll go as far as I can. Okay, let's take a look at that. So I've done a pretty good job of restoring the flatness in this area, and let's see how it fits the buck. So I'm going to unbend this curl slightly just with my hands. I'll do the same on this side. Yeah, that's a whole lot better. So I have almost exactly the angle I need in this area. And it looks like these two corners need to go down just a small amount. So I'll use a wheel with more contour now, a tighter radius wheel. I'll see if I can pull these corners down. So what I'm going to do is as I pull the metal toward me, I'll push this part down and that will have the result of giving this more of a curl. I'm sort of bending the metal around that lower wheel. Let's see how that worked on this one side. Worked very nicely. I think I went just a tiny bit too far. Yeah, that's very nice. I'll do the same on this corner. That shape is coming along beautifully. I think what I'll do is use the lowest crown wheel and um, get the best shape I can on the front part of this and blend these two sides together. So I'm using very low pressure for this. Pretty happy with that. We'll try it on the buck. And I'd say that's a real nice fit. So we're ready to move on to the next piece. I have the blank cut to size for the last piece. And this has a very large reverse curve area. I'm going to shape the reverse curve first. And I've marked my buck where the reverse curve starts. So by putting a straight edge on here, I found that the reverse curve starts right here and I put a line of tape on the buck to show that point and I put a line on my panel to show that point. So the first step is going to be to stretch these edges. Actually before I do any stretching I'm going to put this curve in the panel first. When you're developing a reverse curve you're always trading contour right to left with contour front to back. So you need to keep one of those constant. So we're going to keep the curve from front to back constant as we develop the curve from side to side. So that's a pretty good start. And now we'll start dropping these edges down by stretching. So I've made one pass, now we'll go the other direction and stretch it again. The amount of stretching gets less and less as I get toward the center of the part. 
but toward the ends it needs a whole lot of stretching. So there's our first pass with the stretcher. Let's try this on the buck. And it's coming along. I'm going to give it a bit more from this point forward. You can see I've really dropped that edge down a lot. And I'll try it on the buck again. That's pretty good for a start. I'll do the same thing to the other side now. And I'll try this on the buck again. We're off to a good start. This edge needs to be stretched extensively also. That's what I'll do next. You can see just how much this has changed the shape of the panel. It's all moving in the right direction, and we'll try it on the buck. So far, so good. So the effect of the shrinker doesn't go more than about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and three-eighths into the panel. And we need to push this stretching deeper into the panel. So I can do that with the English wheel. So it's pretty much flat in the center. And of course, we need to develop a nice curve. So I'll start wheeling to accomplish that. Now the way to think about the wheel is the top wheel is flat. So you have to always orient the panel so it's convex where the top wheel touches it. If you try and wheel it so that it's concave, it will leave two parallel tracks on the metal, like railroad tracks. So let's start wheeling in the center. These corners are always a little bit tricky because we've got curves coming from two different directions. Okay, check that against the buck. That has a little bit too much curve, but I promise you that'll come out. So now I'll start wheeling these areas. And again, it needs to be convex where it touches the top wheel. So we'll introduce it into the machine this way. And I'm lifting up a little bit as I pull it toward me. So I've been working just on one side, but let me show you what I've accomplished. So on the side I haven't wheeled, you can see it's still very nearly flat, and on the side that I have wheeled, I've made quite a curve in that. So it's all moving in the right direction, I just need to do a lot more of it. But let me bring this second side along to match what I've done to the first side. Again, I'm lifting as I pull it toward me. So lots of curve in the panel, but I don't think it's enough. We'll go back to the buck to find out. So I'm pretty happy with the curl we have from top to bottom. It's looking good on both sides. Let's check the contour right to left. Actually, that contour is matching pretty well on this top station. And it's much, much better than it was on the second station. It's still rocking a little bit, but only about a quarter of an inch. So let me show you what this looks like with the straight edge touching it. You can see that I have gotten that curve all the way up to the center now. It's still slightly flat right in the center, and I can fix that with some more wheeling. Okay, I've got a nice bit on this side, nice bit on this side. It's matching the contour of the top station quite well. 
it needs quite a bit more curve on this station but the fit on the top station is really quite good so I've been working on this for something like 10 minutes and it's certainly coming along I mean we're about 90 percent of the way there but the way this works is the first 90 percent of the work takes 90 percent of the time and the last 10 percent well that takes another 90 percent of the time so I'll do a lot of the tune-up of this off-camera and when I come back we'll start shaping the bottom of this to match the buck. I just reviewed the video footage and found the camera was rolling one half hour to shape this part and then off-camera I put about another hour into it just fine-tuning it and it's actually fitting the buck superbly well. I'm very very happy with this. It's nice and stationary on all the stations of the buck. So we'll start shaping the rear part now and just like before the first operations are on the edges and in this case because I want the edges to go down I'll use the shrinker. So it needs very little shrinking in the center because this is almost flat. So I'll start the shrinking on this corner and the shrinking pressure will diminish as I reach the center. I'll try this on the buck. That may be pretty close to what I need. I'll start shrinking the other side. I'll try this side on the buck. Now I'll do some shrinking on the bottom edge. Let's see how this fits the buck. Well, it's not that far off, but of course the center needs to dome up. So I'll get my hot glue gun stick out here, and uh, that's telling me that it probably needs to dome up, oh, maybe three quarters of an inch right here. So I'm going to start wheeling. Lots of doming in that now, and let's see how it fits the buck. So the arch is too high in the back. It's big enough that I can stick my finger in there. So I need to push this down. That's a lot better. Gosh, let's pull it in pretty close. I'm actually fairly happy with the depth that I have, so I'm going to put in a lower crown wheel and start smoothing this out. So it's much smoother, but let's see how it fits the buck. Again, it's bulged up on this side. So I'll push that down. So I can see it's rocking on this station right here. So I'll dome the center of this a little bit more. Oh, 
Well, that's fitting surprisingly well. Let me be honest with you. This is the third one of these I've made to fit this buck. The first one took hours and hours and hours, but I learned a lot from that. And what I've learned in doing the last two pieces, I'm bringing to this new piece, and I'm amazed at how quickly it's shaping up. So it's fitting all the stations reasonably well. It does need a little tune-up, but I'll do that off camera. I put another hour into fine-tuning the shape. I must say I'm thrilled with the results. This is fitting the buck like a glove. And reverse curves have always been challenging for me, so I can really see the benefits of putting the time in to master the technique of making this panel fit the buck. So that's the conclusion of this video. In the next one, I'll start fitting these parts together. I love making these videos, and I'm honored that you're watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified about new videos. I read every comment, and I do my best to answer all questions. If you like what I'm doing, please click the Patreon link and become one of the great people who help me create new videos.